eyes of many gamers, a controller has become an indispensable peripheral, even if you don't have a console and only game on your PC. And there's a good reason for this. Most of the games nowadays are developed for consoles first and only later ported to PC. And aside from the optimization and stability issues that this can result in, it also means that some games will have huge problems with controls. For starters, it's not that uncommon to find PC games that don't even support mouse and keyboard controls at all, in which case you absolutely will need a controller if you want to play them. But it's even worse when you think you can play a game only to find out that the mouse and keyboard controls are so horribly asinine that they're effectively unusable. Just think of the original Dark Souls 1 port. So the best thing to do to make sure that your gaming experience is the best it can possibly be is to just go ahead and buy a controller. That's why we've made this video, to help you out with that. Over the course of this buyer's guide, we'll go through the six best PC controllers you can buy right now, both budget and high-end ones. So without any further ado, let's begin. The first entry is the DualShock 4 controller by Sony. If it's good enough for the most popular gaming console today, then it's good enough to start off our list. There's a whole number of things that sets the DualShock 4 apart from its previous iterations. But the most important distinction came in the result of Sony's biggest departure from the usual designs since they first introduced the analog sticks back in the DualShock 1 era. The controller is now bigger and more ergonomic. Even the trigger buttons have been redesigned to provide more comfort when held down. And then there are the entirely new features, like the highly functional touchpad. The DualShock 4 also swaps in the old 6-axis motion detection technology for a gyroscope that simply works wonders for racing games, fine-tuning your aim and even just as a cursor on a desktop. It also has a headphone jack and a built-in speaker. But there's one other feature that you may not be aware of, and that's Steam support. The DualShock 4 presents a deviation from Sony's usual business model, in that it does have full Steam support. Of course, this means you'll have to have Steam up and running in order to use the controller even with non-Steam titles, but unlike the DualShock 3, this controller also has excellent third-party support that you can use in these situations. And of course, we can't talk about the DualShock 4 and not mention its biggest competitor, the Xbox One controller. This one is also an improvement on its previous generation in many ways. It's lighter and more ergonomic with textured grips and it's also more minimalistic. But if we're talking design, then one of the best things about the Xbox One controller is that it comes in many variations and you can even design your own custom controller in the design lab. We've left a link to the design lab in the description for those of you who want to try it out. It's fun to tinker with even if you don't plan on buying it. Being a Microsoft product, it has native Windows support and you can finally remap the buttons as you like using Microsoft's official utility. On the flip side, while the D-pad is better than the 360s, it still suffers from loud and rigid transitions, so we wouldn't recommend it for fighting games and side-scrollers. And this final thing can be a pro or a con, depending on how you look at it, and that's rechargeability. This controller uses regular AA batteries instead of a rechargeable one, so if you want to go rechargeable, you'll have to spend around 20 more dollars in the charging kit and the batteries themselves. The Xbox One Elite controller is just what it sounds like, an improved and more expensive version of the original. It's easily recognizable by its black and grey color scheme and the fact that it sports some metal parts, but you're hardly going to pay the extra money just for the looks. In terms of functionality, the Elite controller offers everything that the original does, and then some. So we'll just talk about all the new stuff. It actually has a swappable thumbstick and D-pad caps, allowing not just for further customizability, but a convenient way to replace some worn out parts. Just be aware, the durability of this thing is not the best, despite it costing twice as much as the previous entry. The bumpers and sticks in particular are very likely to get damaged with prolonged use. In addition to this, it has four back paddles that can all be mapped to different buttons or button combinations using the official app and their hair trigger locks. The Xbox 360 controller was pretty much the default PC controller during the previous generation of consoles. Like we've said, the DualShock 3 could only be used with third-party software, and these weren't any good, and the rest of the PC controller market wasn't even close to where it is today. The 360 controller was simply the only real option, 
So while it may look cheap and outdated compared to the other models on this list, you can rest assured that this is a tried and true controller that the PC community has relied on for years and for good reasons. It has native Windows support and it's very affordable. Because it's an older model, you can find it for half the money that the Xbox One controller goes for. And what's more, if you don't need the wireless functionality and opt for the wired variant, it'll be even cheaper. However, if you're at all familiar with the Xbox 360 controller, then you must have heard about its infamous D-pad and let us tell you that its reputation is warranted. This thing is the 360's very own kryptonite. We said that the Xbox One controller's D-pad wasn't really up to snuff because of how loud it is, but the 360's D-pad can actually interpret commands inaccurately and on top of that it gets worn out very easily. So just keep this in mind. Steam goes hand in hand with PC gaming, so the Steam controller seemed like the natural step for Valve to take, seeing as they weren't making Half-Life 3 anyway but the reception it had fell short of everyone's expectations. However, this doesn't mean that the controller is bad per se, just that it didn't take the gaming world by storm. It still remains one of the most unique entries on the list. The cool thing about the Steam controller is that it was designed to be usable in games that don't natively support controllers. And you can easily spot the revolutionary design that came to accommodate this idea at first glance. One thumbstick and the four face buttons remain, but the second thumbstick and the D-pad were replaced by two trackpads. These trackpads can be mapped to serve any purpose, from simple mouse control to steering wheels or anything in between that you could need. In fact, customizability is one of its biggest strengths. You can remap every single button and function to your liking. Nothing else would suffice for a controller made for games that don't support controllers, after all. Aside from that, it remains unbeaten in terms of motion control, and it's easy to see why seeing as it uses both the gyroscope and an accelerometer. So where did the Steam controller go wrong? The way we see it, part of the reason comes down to the overambitious design. The Steam controller was made to be usable with games that don't natively support controllers. But the thing is, it'll never be as precise as a mouse and a keyboard, whether you're using the gyroscope or the trackpads. Just try and imagine having to quickly click a bunch of small buttons in an RTS game and you'll get the picture. And then there's the fact that the unusual layout and the lack of a second analog stick and the D-pad just seems off-putting to some people. Many avoid this controller altogether because they feel that the traditional controller layout isn't something that needs fixing. And those who have tried it said that they needed time to adjust. And just as a side note, it uses the Xbox approach to the way it handles batteries, but with the added benefit of a way lower power consumption. You probably weren't expecting the GameSir G3W to make this list. Probably because you've never heard of it. We get it. The GameSir brand isn't nearly as recognizable as Sony, Microsoft, or Valve. But they're actually a company that focuses specifically on gaming controllers. So while you may look at the G3W controller and think, this looks a lot like the DualShock 4, you can rest assured that this isn't some shameless poor quality ripoff. It's not the best entry on the list, but if you're looking for a reliable budget solution, you won't find a better controller in this price range. What sets it apart from many other budget models is that it includes some features not normally seen in them like the vibration, for example. Budget controllers normally avoid vibration functions altogether, but the G3W is packed with dual vibration motors. They're not as precise as those in premium quality controllers, but they're more than excellent considering the price range. And the same goes with pressure-sensitive triggers. Aside from that, the controller is easy to set up as an Xbox controller on Windows. You just have to plug it in and it'll do the rest by itself. And finally, it has a detachable bracket that you can use to fit your phone, making it one of the best controllers for mobile gaming. Of course, if you think this feature is a gimmick, you can order it without the bracket and it'll be even cheaper. The trade-offs are the lack of wireless support and the flamboyant color scheme. You could technically get a wireless variant, but it wouldn't be such a cost-effective budget solution anymore. So we want you to know that that's not the variant that we're giving the thumbs up here. Now, if you're wondering which of these is the best controller for you, just answer the following questions. Firstly, do you own a console? If yes, then you'd naturally want one that's compatible with both the console and the PC. 
Secondly, you should think hard about whether you need the Bluetooth connectivity. The high-end models only come in wireless, but if you're looking at a more budget solution, it's good to remember that you'll always be paying extra for the wireless variant, which you may not actually need. If you're only gaming on a computer, that is. Thirdly, consider what kind of games you play the most. This may seem unimportant at first, but some controllers really are better suited for some games. The DualShock 4 is better than the Xbox One controller for side-scrollers and fighting games because of its superior D-pad, but the opposite holds true for shooters because of the bigger triggers. And finally, there is your budget. The way we see it, the budget for any controller should reflect how much you plan to use it. If it's just for a handful of games, then a budget solution is more than good enough. But if you'll be using it for most of your games, you won't regret spending $50 on a more proper console controller. In the end, our pick for the best controller on this list goes to the Xbox One controller, due to its plug-and-play compatibility with Windows 10, making it the most straightforward and hassle-free option. On the other hand, if you're looking for a budget solution, then we feel that the Xbox 360 controller would definitely be the best pick. Yes, there are even cheaper controllers out there, but this tried-and-true veteran manages to strike the best balance between price and quality. Of course, if you already own a PS4, then getting a DualShock 4 might be the best way to go, since you'd have a controller compatible with both your console and your PC. And there it is, a comprehensive buyer's guide for the best PC controllers to buy right now. Let us know in the comments if you find this video helpful and, of course, if you disagree with our picks or not. We have more buyer's guides on the way, so until then, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Gaming Scan. Scan.